You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaproda film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome to the Never Daily Podcast. I wanted to I wanted to bring something up here right off the front. Um, <clears throat> I opened up Instagram to find your to find your one of your favorite living rent free in your head accounts, which yes. you you told us it's what was it called? What was it called again? I'm on my main page now. It's called, we're just normal men. We're just normal men. And I don't want to steal your thunder, so, so explain explain. Explain the story again on what's going on here with this. So there's a an account on Instagram called We're Just Normal Men. And they post the same video clip every single day. There's nothing different. It's the same clip every day. And you're like, well, that's got to get boring fast. Here's the crazy thing. It does it. And it's you'd have to watch the video. All you got to do is go to Instagram, top in we're just normal men and you'll see the account. It's the same video over and over. But it's like a British kids show um where there's a puppet with a dog on it talking to a woman. And in it the woman uh well the the dog talks first and he goes we're just normal men. <laughs> and the the female host, she like giggles a little bit. So you already know something is something we're not, we're not privy to some kind of information. This is definitely an inside joke. And she giggles and she goes, what do you mean? Normal men. And he goes, we're just innocent men. And she fucking loses it, dude. <laughs> and it's funny, even without context, the video was funny. Cause you don't, but and then you do a dive into the video and you learn the back. So the backstory of this video is the guy that's got his hand up the puppet's ass. Um, the night prior was apparently coming home from the bar with his friends and they were all drunk and they were approached by police who were looking for a man who had bust, who had broke into a store um, a few minutes earlier. And one of his buddies was scared shitless and when the cops started questioning him, the guy said, we're just normal men. <laughs> and the cop giggled a little bit and said, what do you mean normal men? And he goes, with tears in his eyes, we're just innocent men. <laughs> so stupid. But brilliant. So, so what you saw in the video is an inside joke. That only they got, the two of them got at the time. And that's why they're cracking up so hard. The video is is hilarious. Uh, and it's and now I watch it like 12 times a day. We're just normal men. So that got me thinking. And it's <clears throat> it's like that Martin Scorsese delivery. <laughs> like coming from a dog puppet <laughs> with just innocent men. <laughs> Which is funny because even on the show, you can tell that why, he, when he said it, it was even out of context on the show. So, you know. Yes, completely <laughs> irrelevant to what they were doing. They were like winding up the show. It was like ending. They were winding down the show. <laughs> so funny. So you have to check that out if you wanted uh, or a little bit of a rabbit hole. So another thing I wanted to mention, this I don't know. Like you guys know, I like AI. I'm I use it. I'm I'm get trying to get better with it. Yep, Haley Joe Osment, Jude Law. Uh, the last movie I think uh, that was supposed to be directed by Kubrick, and then um, James Cameron. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not took the, the reins. Not the movie AI. Oh, which was good. I, we've talked about that. Um. Okay, so I, I just went back to my homepage on Instagram and there's this box that I can close and I would have closed it really fast because I hate it when Instagram or Facebook tries to get me to use some new dumb tool. But this one kind of caught my eye. So the pop-up says, chat with AI characters. Make an AI for deep conversations, help with specific topics, or just for fun. So I don't know why, because like, I I'm building chatbots so that I can 
do different things. Like I'm, I'm building a chat bot that, that ha- I dumped, I don't know, a couple gigabytes worth of conversations that I've had with people that are like, I don't know how to do this in Patreon or how do I subscribe to, so I've given it all of the tech support that we've had for like questions about 1159 and this chat bot, all its brain is, is all the tech support content. Right. And so you can ask it anything and it'll pull from all of that data and give you a, like a humanized response. So I use chat bots all the time or I'm, I'm starting to. This one creeps me out, though, because it's in Instagram. It's telling me to create a character that I can just talk to and have conversations about, like, whatever I want. And that, like, I just think about my daughter sitting on Instagram and being like, I'm feeling lonely. And the chatbot's like, wow, that's, oh, you know, like, it's creeping me out now, suddenly. Like, I don't know that we... Oh, here's the funny part. You were thinking about your daughter doing that, but you are actually doing that. <laughs> I, but I'm doing it as a utility. I, I, the, the way they're uh-huh. taking it is they're What's like... What's its name? <laughs> Wilfred? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it just, it's creeping me out that they're like, make a friend. Build a friend. Ask it anything you want. Oh, it kind of got It's me. like Build-A-Bear for adults. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Are you, are you a, um, like on Instagram, I used to try to do this thing. Cause I have, I have a private account. I, uh, it's funny. It's super weird. Um, I have, I have zero posts on my Instagram. Like I don't post anything on it and I've had it for I, I, as long as Instagram has been around. I have 751 followers. I don't post a thing on it. Yeah. But I also, I used to be like, oh, well, and then, and then it kind of creeped me out because I realized, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you have friends on fa- on Instagram and you're scrolling through Instagram and suddenly like, let's just, let's just say like you see some girl doing some booty butthole dance. Okay. Hmm. And it's a post, you know, you come across, it tells you underneath the video, which accounts you're, fo- you follow have liked that video. So yeah, you gotta be care. Like, so for that reason, like it, it, it haunts me in my head. I'm like, okay, but I'm, I, I'm confident that like people be like, oh, Sam, Sam liked another watercolor painting video (laughs) like i'm pretty based as far as like what i use it for but do you do you follow a bunch of accounts on your on your personal instagram no i would say out of all the apps instagram is probably the one i spend the least amount of time on and what is slowly getting more and more time for me that i hate i'm not proud of it twitter is twitter yeah um and it's not because i'm like doing anything important. Right. It's because I've discovered that Twitter is the is one of the best after you get your algorithm going straight. Yep. Twitter is Twitter is the best for doom scrolling. Yes. Cuz it's the only place I know of where I can watch a neat video about somebody restoring an old 68 Chevelle. Right. And then I can roll one time with one click of the mouse and now I'm watching a man be beheaded. Right. It, it like Elon has said, he's like, this will be the place for spe- free speech. So I, I've bucketed my social and I think it's just the way that I've kind of built the, the you know, the algorithm is built for me. But Facebook is like a, a community. Like it's where it's where I have people that I, I might comment on a thing here and there. And then I might post something random here and there. Instagram is it's it's like. Instagram for me is like sh- walking the hall, the aisles of Hobby Lobby or walking the aisles of the auto parts store or uh, walking the aisles yeah. of the antiques. Like it's, it's my, it's, it's my passion project hub. Yeah. It's safe. Yeah. And then Twitter is like watching, watching, walking the streets of Gaza. Yes. E- well, exactly. And I, you and I had this conversation a little while ago and I was kind of banging the drum that Twitter is is now a like 
if something happens in Gaza within eight minutes, we'll know about it on Twitter because Twitter, yeah. Twitter is like this, 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 it's the, the, the world's market for what's happening right now. And yeah, so I use it for that. Like, but. I've also realized sometimes the the algorithm reflects the uncomfortable truth about yourself that you don't want to really accept. Mm -hmm. And for me, X or or Twitter reflects the fact that I really have a deep interest in is the world ending. <laughs> I guess that's the best yeah. way to put it. Cause like I, I think everybody's feeling that way right now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I, I have to. I only. I can only give Twitter so much time in a in the day because it's two things for me. It's the absolute overload of what's happening in AI, which is it changes literally daily. It's so hard. It's a absolute whiplash. You can't keep up with it. It's very hard. But I'm trying because. I, I do truly believe that if you're in a biz, if you own a business or you're in a business where you can affect change, if AI isn't a consideration or you're not f thinking about how AI is can, could affect your business, you're, you're going to be behind. And I believe that. So trying to keep on the front edge of that. But then also, I like, I like knowing what's happening on the world stage. And today, especially, like I had to turn it off because... I don't know if you know, UK is like burning down. Falling apart? Yeah. Because there, there's, there's the Muslim immigrant mobs and the anti-Muslim immigrant mobs that are clashing now. And their prime minister, who was just put in, is telling everybody, you better stop messing with the immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, ah, from the videos I've seen, that's not really what's going on. What do you mean? I mean, it, it, there's a lot of destruction going on and thefts and everything from the immigrants. Yeah, well, in Yes. So this is the frightening part. And this is why people are like, oh, the UK is lost because the prime minister is he is very, very left leaning. And so he's 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 telling the native UK the people native from the UK that you are being in, intolerant, you know, you're racist, you're bigoted if you're if you're fighting against the Muslims that are running around literally with machetes and swords. There's there was a BBC reporter on the sidewalk talking about the white mobs that are running around affecting the Muslims, ah. and in the background is a gang of Muslims with machetes and swords. But the problem is the prime minister, and there's two sides to the story, but I'm just saying like from the lens of what we're seeing, the prime minister is telling the white natives, you better stop it. And he's even saying, if you say anything on social media, we will come and arrest you. The and thing is, doing it's not it. just white natives. It's black natives too. Uh, yeah, it's right. It's native. It's, the natives are tired. The natives, uh, yeah. There's a huge portion of that population that's also black. Yeah, and that's kind of beautiful because it's brought them together. Well, and I think um, that's always been a really interesting thing about places like London is there's a very diverse population, and it, it's been it. And but this has been a population that's been generated over generations, and they've assimilated. They've found ways that these diverse cultures that have come together in London to, to coexist. And what you're, what yeah. you're finding is ideologically the, the, the immigrants that are coming over, by the way, not a lot of ladies, not a lot of kids, just a bunch of guys. They don't have jobs. And this might sound critical to some people, but there's a reason why the whole local, local native population is up in arms about this, but the prime minister is pro immigration. So there's video now of like a lady who said something on social media and the cops showed up to her house to arrest her. Like it's, it's out mm. of control. Anyway, that's where I go for my, what's happening in the news, but I can't give it very much because I'm like, okay, okay is the world as bad as, I, as it seems? Hopefully not. I'm having to put forth a concentrated effort on all socials to not talk about politics every single time I do anything just because of how much politics I'm watching right, right. now. 
Right. Um, it's like, I mean, it's an election season. We're in the middle of an election. I know people get tired of hearing it, but like that's taken up a lot of my time as Kate is keeping up with what's going on with the election more. So for me, for the entertainment value, yeah. just because of how fucked right. everything is, it's almost like a reality show level of fucked that we are. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying watching everything crash and burn just because I can't do anything else about it. So you might as well giggle and make some popcorn. Yeah. And it's just, it's the end of the world. (laughs) So (laughs) what's funny, I'll tell you, I've appreciated your social media posts, particularly on Facebook where you're posting about things that you find interesting because I, a lot of people might think that we're like ideologically so on opposite ends, but you and I have a lot of similar thoughts and you may not want to ascribe that to that same because your your crowd will be like, no, no, Kent is not like the, op- screw you, shut up the operator. What do we agree with? I'll, I'll, I'll bust it out. What do we agree with? I think, I think we agree. I think we're both libertarian in, in mind as far as people should be able to do what they want. Yeah. I think that we both, and this is just me opining on where you and I, I think, find middle ground. I think we both believe that there should be a certain level of law that we all, that we all agree on. Yes. I think that I've, I think a lot of people that are religious or not religious, they think that we're on polar opposites when in reality, I think there's a lot more similarities than dissimilarities. I yes. I believe in God. I know that you think that there might be something there. And yes. to a lot of people out there, they're like, well, that's not the same. And I'm like, no, it's enough to have fun conversations about. If you were completely, there is no God, then our conversations would be different. But you're, you're at least like, yeah, there might be something there. So I think we kind of sit in the same spot there. Uh, I think that when it comes to... When- I just think like... I can't take anybody seriously that like 100%, 1,000% like in their head knows that this is what happens when we die. Yeah. Because like you haven't been dead before. Right. And you don't know anybody that has been dead before. So like how can you not like it's it's to me it's it's the same as like. We're in a room, right? And we've been in this room our entire lives with all these people. And there's a door that goes into another room. And when you go into that other room, when you when you open that door and go in, you're not allowed to come back in and, and relay information to the other people on what's in that other room. And nobody knows anybody else that's been in that room, but everybody in that room still somehow in their head knows what's on the other side of that door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think I under I understand that I understand because <clears throat> being being somebody that that bl- bases my my understanding of what happens after we die on on religious tenets right I I can respect the fact that for you you look at that and you're like but how you're lis- you're literally listening to somebody else tell you what happens when you die and t- I can yeah. see how on on your side of that that looks so weird. Like, and, and to any, and and that's, here's the, here's, here's the challenge I think with having a religious belief is you and I both have had sex, right? Okay. Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. We've both had sex. With, not with each other. Not with each other. Right. We both had sex. But we both. tried. (laughs) We're just two bears and we're both probably bottoms. So it was a challenge. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of belly hair rubbing together. <laughs> I did not know how much static electricity that generates. Um, no, okay, we both had basically s- ma- turned us into Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's kind of like this. It's like we both had sex, and we understand the massive impact that having that experience in your life has on your life, like. Yes. We watch how it affects people in the world, our friends, our family, our interpersonal relationships. But it's something that 
you now if you think about sitting on a couch next to Mo or me sitting on the couch next to Bean Bean and being like, all right, I'm just going to explain everything that I know based on my experience. You would be like, there's no way I can explain what I've experienced to this to this person who is not only hasn't experienced, but is years away from understanding the gravity, right? <clears throat> that to me is having this, that's the best way I can ex explain having a, a spiritual faith is it's so individual. Like when, when I, when, when I know, when I knew that, like, I knew there was God, there was a God. It was because I had that experience, right? And then from there, I can't explain that to somebody who, who hasn't experience if you've parallel with the sex thing i can't explain it well enough that you're like okay oh, i believe that there's significance there you'd have to experience it yourself and that's that's the best way i th i think i can explain it is it's such a it's such a fundamental piece to people that have faith but it's impossible to just transfer to somebody else and so until somebody else is like well i'll give it a shot i'll i'll go and see i'll find out if there's something there for myself. And then I think that's why it's really hard. Once you have that little bit, then you're like, okay, well, I should listen to this person. Oh, where have they talked to me? Oh, they've talked to me in that book and that book and this person. And, and then you start building that. And then, then because of that baseline faith, somebody is like, here's what happens when you die. Then as a person with the faith, and I'm listening to people that are of, of faith, they say, this is what happens when you die. I'm more apt to believe and understand and then maybe get confirmation for myself that that's true. But but all of that aside, it's like the sex thing. It's like, I can't expect you. I can't just hand it to you, right? And so I can't expect you to. I, well, I need to, I need to, I hear you, but like, here's my counter argument to that. I didn't, like, I'm not a... Well, I am now, but like I didn't grow up a heathen. No, right, totally. Like I grew up in church. Yeah, I went to church every time the doors were open because my grandma made me. Up until I was about like thirteen, fourteen years old. Yeah, I grew up in church in a Southern Baptist church, and I remember like so bad. I hearing people talk about you know I felt God mm -hmm. and and like it was so emotional and and all this stuff and. There was a period there where I got really into it because I so badly wanted that feeling. Right. To like experience that, what I've heard other people talk about. And no matter how hard I chased it, I never felt anything that I couldn't, that I couldn't pin on me just wanting to feel that. Explain it another way, right? Like, oh, well, this yes, is why I felt Never. That. I've never felt that in my whole life. <laughs> right. And I have tried, man on multiple occasions and if a th I feel like if there was a god in that sense and a 12 13 year old is begging to feel something from him and he does nothing mm -hmm. that's very concerning yeah that's very concerning cuz i've never felt anything like what a lot of christians or muslims or any any, any religion, religion right claims yeah. to feel that couldn't be attributed to other factors. Right. And, and as somebody who's had it, I, I just sit here going, I don't have a good answer. I don't have a good answer on why you didn't have that experience. Again, <clears throat> if we take the sex scenario and, and I say, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a mode of communication that, that, and I believe you. But let's just say that you're the person who had a terrible experience with sex. I can't, I'm, I'm, I can't, or, you know, using that same logic, it's like you, you're like, man, I've tried. I've never, I've never felt anything. I also need to say, I, I sorry, I, I was talking on an inhale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't have a bad experience with religion right. either. I mean, I enjoyed going to church. Yeah. I love spending that time with my mom. I remember eating fucking Werther's Originals and like the little strawberry things that only grandmas know where you buy them, where it's in a strawberry package. <laughs> the ones that only show up at Christmas. Preacher. 
Yes. <laughs> and yeah. And going to Sunday school, and there was little cliques in Sunday school, just like at school school. Yeah. Some of us would go outside at playtime and play football, and there'd be that one little gay boy <laughs> that like is really fighting his feelings, skipping rope in the corner. And like still, even with the good I had a good experience right. with my upbringing with but I never felt anything. Yeah. Yeah, and and I I don't I I think I think some some people in various faiths would say, "Well, you're missing out." I I just look at it like like Kent if I had to give you if if, if from my perspective, I think I think that you're a powerful individual. And I think anybody that's ever heard you talk would say that. And I think I think oftentimes for powerful individuals, life is harder because, because whatever you're going to affirm and confirm in your life will be harder to come by. And I'm not I'm not saying keep trying, Ken. Oh, that's fair. Good. What I don't I'm know saying, about being powerful, but <clears throat> I, I do require a, a lot of con- convincing to take something as fact. And I'm not saying I'm not using this as a missionary moment. What I'm saying, I think, in anything that you do in your life, you are a powerful individual, and it's only going to come through rigor. You and I have talked a lot about how, and and I I've said it a lot, but I, I don't I I have a hard time translating it, but I do believe you're bigger than eleven fifty nine, and what I mean by that is the character, the comedian, the personality, all the things that you are 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 much bigger than the stage that we the little stage we have here, and you you will that will increase as you are interested in in having that increase. But I believe that about you, about everything. Like, like you, um, you've taken steps recently to be more of an entrepreneur, right? And, and that comes with new learning. It's not, it's everything, everything that makes you more powerful. No one's going to be able to just hand it to you, Kent. And I mean that I'm not like finger wagging or I'm saying you will, you personally are going to become more powerful because you put the time and effort in. I'm talking to myself and talking to anybody there, but when it maybe maybe I'm not a good entrepreneur. You want me to tell you why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Case in point, Patreon. Now, Patreon does have a tendency sometimes to fuck people over. They're getting double charged, stuff like that. And I don't know how to deal with Patreon. And I'm going to say this information and I'm going to front load it with please don't take advantage of me. <laughs> Because this is how I deal with people getting fucked over by Patreon. And I've done it many, many, many times in the past month. And it is having an effect on our account. (laughs) When somebody messages me and says, hey, Patreon screwed me out of this amount of money. I I just double the, so if I say it's $9, I go, how much do they screw you out of? They go $9. And then I ask them for their Venmo. And I send them twenty dollars oh. from my own account, Dude. my own, mo- and this has happened a lot. Oh, no. And we are suffering for it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um. One thing. One thing I found in in a month, and Jess can attest to this. We have a percentage of people that have what I'd call buyer's remorse, and so they'll sign up for Patreon, and then they'll be like, "Oh, oh, I needed that money." Not that they even hated the content or anything, but there are some excuse engines out there who come and they're like, they plead their case, you know, and, and sometimes there's buyer's remorse. Uh, and, and Jess, you're, you're talking on a muted, but you need to unmute. <laughs> okay. Sometimes whether, whatever platform it is, they could accidentally be double charged but the bank catches it yeah. or whatever platform catches mm-hmm. it and they actually get the refund of the second charge like later in the statement. Yeah. So sometimes you may be giving them a refund and they aren't even being double charged. And and that it just it's a case by it case is. basis. So you have to go in and look at each individual one and kind of do an analysis of. Okay, yeah, see, that's be- where I kind of back out. 
Okay, so if not, I think you- <laughs> you're going to be in the hole yeah. because twenty dollars turns into sixty dollars uh, turns into two hundred and sixty dollars. Like yeah, five hundred dollars. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I- I've and probably so, done it in the not past that people month. Have probably a dozen the, times. Yeah. Okay, the percentage of people that have ill will are very, very low. Small. Very low. But that's why I'm just comfortable like, talking about it, especially with our audience. Right. What I'm saying is that it, it, the people that are doing it, it, like you or I, could maybe just be confused on the process, like or confused on what's happening. So you have to go into them individually. And uh, uh, this is where it's really important. Like, and I'll tell you how uh, this is important for everybody to hear too. If you're dealing with Patreon or one of the other paywalls, is there are two transactions that happen every time you get billed. One is an authorization to make sure that you have money on the card. And that'll, and it depends on your bank or your financial institution. You see the authorization hit. And sometimes the authorization is even a different amount. It could be three transactions, yeah. technically, because there's three <clears throat> things that happen in, a, yeah. in every transaction. And the authorization is not a charge. So Patreon may de- may ping your card just to make sure that you have money there before it tries hitting your account because Patreon is a little I've found Patreon to be a little bit money grubbing in that they this happened like a year and a half ago they accidentally mischarged like almost all of our people a normal company would have been like we're rectifying this they didn't want to deal with the three cent fee on every error they made. So they came to me and they're like, we need you to communicate to your people and tell them to run their card again or check with their bank. I'm like, no, this is your problem. They're like, well, yeah, but the fees. Yes. And I'm like, no, it's three cents. You can suck it up. You get, and well, I wasn't. And gonna... that's why I say it's a case by case yes. basis. So of each you have one. so many factors it's are you doing it on a credit card or a debit card is it a is it a credit union or a bank so i guess kent the one thing i would say is 95 percent of the time it's not you and 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 it's not them either. and it's not them either and it will settle patreon it will settle itself right 95 right. percent of the time if somebody's like oh i got double charged they're not getting double charged. The other thing to know is this is pay, I think a lot of people think that Patreon is like all knowing. And so when they switch from 1159 to yours, they think it's just going to stop charging the 1159 tier like it flip flop. But no, it's it now they're getting charged for both. So it yeah, I mean, there are there are more than one angle. We've dealt with it for a long time, but 95 percent of the time it's not you and it's not the listener. It's it's the paywall and it works itself out, though. That's the important part to know here is that if you go 30 days and you see it's not fixed, then then there's something to talk about. But usually this stuff's rectified within five to seven businesses. And and oftentimes it's not a real charge. It's a pre-auth or an authorization. Your bank squares it away. It's it's. People see people when you go to the gas station and you do it, a lot of gas stations pre-authorize your card for a hundred bucks to see if you got money before you put gas in. But that charge disappears. Anyway, I don't want to tell you to stop refunding people because there will be times where you have to refund people. Um, And that's what I was going to say. In, In if you are confused on the process, you could talk through the scenarios with us. With, yeah. you know, it's I don't not mind. even that I'm confused. But I know you don't want to you don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, but in the long run, though, it's only gonna hurt you. So, yeah, as long as it's I, not I know hurting that sounds somebody cold. else though. Well, and I think that's that's great. That's very good. And we 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 run that same kind of emotional gauntlet. It's like sometimes even though it's nobody's fault, we'll refund somebody just because we're like, it's more important to us to to have a, a, a listener that feels good. And honestly, nine times out of 10, we do refund. It. You could issue the refund within the platform itself. Yeah. You don't oh, need to send you know them that, separate Kent? money. Do you know you can refund them within the platform? I did not right. know that. Yeah. Yes. No. When you go and you click on a person in Patreon, it shows you a little their name and then below it shows you the last 90 days of transactions and then there's a refund button next to each one of those. 
So you can, if you're talking to somebody or somebody reaches out to you on Patreon, if you click on that person, anyway, this has become a tech support thing, but you can refund yeah, them right, it has. right within the Look, program. God <laughs> is... I don't know if what I made made sense it, it, because I think when when you have a belief, when you have a belief in God, it comes across as very hoity-toity or you, it's a lot of people perceive it as, oh, well, well, you're telling me that I can't have the same thing that you had or you're telling me, oh, oh, it must be you. It's not God. I don't have a good answer for that. All I know is that once you once you have a that comp, a confirmation, it's really hard to um to turn away from that. And that's why I think a lot of people that look at people with faith are like, you, you're you totally brainwashed. But the, the experience you have, the closest I can liken it to is that unique experience where until you've had X experience in your life that you can't train, I, I used sex, maybe that's a bad one, but until you've had it for yourself, you you can't wrap your head around its impact on your life. And, and I, I feel like I'm already being, and kind that's of fair. And, and I, and I don't mean to like bring politics back up into it, but like one thing I'm seeing a lot with the, and this is with the Trumpers. Yeah. Is what, and I've lost a lot of my biblical knowledge, you know, so I haven't been to church. I don't, I'm like fuck, 15 years, but what is it? Thou shalt not worship a, a false prophet. Yeah. Oh, um, and they're, the way they're, they're putting Trump up it. on a, is a little weird. <laughs> it's, it's really it's wrong creepy. Is what it is. It 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 almost feels as somebody who's not even religious. Even I go. I think that's a sin. What it's you're wrong. doing? Yeah. I, again, you're this, worshiping uh, a millionaire. I drive who has down always the freeway. Been a millionaire. Yeah. I think I think in some people's cases, and I think both sides are doing. They're like, which which is the side of evil that I'm mo that lines more up with my ideals? And they're picking the the. We do not have awesome options, but to your we point, don't. to your point, well, be both sides is fucked. It's fucked. Yeah, Kamala today picked her VP candidate, and it's the governor of Minnesota. Yeah, I had never and heard of him until she picked him as her VP. Have you ever heard of Ilhan Omar? Yes. So she's the senator over in the Minneapolis area. Highly, it's it's so it's so highly uh, Muslim now. It will probably never not Ilhan will probably never be unseated. But this gov the governor is very he lines right up with with Kamala's. Uh, ideals. And so it's a great fit for, for Kamala. I mean, it's a great fit. This guy is, uh, he just had an interview and he said, one man's socialism is another, another man's neighborliness. So he's definitely in, in line with like what, what, how she wants to see things go. It's, it's an interesting fit. <clears throat> um, yeah, but to your point about the Trump thing and, and, and everything, I think that the, the people go so overboard like, so quickly thinking I that everybody's going to understand shared by I see memes shared by like people in my family and stuff that's like got Trump up by a cross like they're like yeah, or one meme away from just posting a picture of Trump on the cross right. crucified like it's so fucking weird dude it's so I'll do you, weird I'll, I'll do you one better and I think a lot of Christians maybe don't even realize how hardcore this is i drive down the the highway and there's a church off off the freeway and they have one of those big blinking signs on the freeway and it just says this is gonna this is gonna probably piss a lot of christians off but it just says jesus died for you and here's the thing in order to understand that at all or have it not be a totally creepy thing takes a lot of looking into it Otherwise, you yeah. just sound really flippant. Like all that does for somebody that has zero context in Jesus is like, oh wow, th thanks for thanks for insulting me. Like that bothers me about about Christianity and other and other faiths like that, where they're so hardcore with like fundamental beliefs that they throw a really fastball at people without any context. What does that even mean? 
without context. Like, yeah. imagine imagine just plucking somebody out of Kenya that you know what tribe, and bringing them here and showing them that sign, and there and and then having them try to figure out what that means on their own definition as they're driving by sixty five miles an hour on the freeway, impossible. I guess. You know what? Do you, does that make sense? Like, like it bothers it does, me when but I whenever see I that. see something like that in my head, I think, well, it would have been great if he would have acknowledged my existence when I was thirteen years old and right. trying so desperately to find religion, and he just completely ignored me. Thanks, JC. Right. And I guess that, like, so that right there, because what, like, what I said, plucking a guy from Kenya, dropping him in front of the sign, he's got to figure it out. I guess what it's doing is it's doing, I guess, what I said earlier, which is regardless whether it's we're talking Christianity or we're, we're talking, you know, CNC machining, the, the sign can be in front of you that says Jesus died for you, or somebody can plop a five axis CNC machine in front of you. Neither one makes any difference until you put in the effort. And sometimes it's going to take a lot of effort to figure it out for yourself. And I, I, but I'm so tired of poli the political. I, I, it's just, you can't avoid it right now. I, I, I don't like talking. It's just, it's what's on my mind a lot right now, just because I'm consuming so much of it because it's an election season yeah. and I get stressed out. And then I have to go outside and hit a tree with a fucking tie rod uh, to get my anger out. And it's like, we've got Trump on this side. We're fucked. And then you got Kamala over here. Give me a word. Any word, and I'll tell you how Kamala, uh, let's say, I was, oh, I would just pulled a random word out of my head. Society. Okay. This is Kamala. Every time she says anything. Yeah, see, the thing about society is we, as a society, we live in a society. <laughs> and we've had societies for millions of years, and in the future there'll be a society, and we're in the society right now. And then everybody, oh my God, oh, oh. she's fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh my God. That was, can I get a shirt with that on it? Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Is she reading from a book? How did she have that memorized? <laughs> Her cackle's killing me. Uh, did you hear uh, the, the one that she's sitting in between? Oh, hold on. Let me do the same thing, but to a black crowd. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, the thing about society is I used to make greens, right? And we lived in a society when I was making greens. <laughs> she now a Mexican crowd. Yes, do you think about a society? <laughs> that's I think that's the Asians. Never mind. That's I why can't I She does she does she's afforded the freedom to 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 culturally pluck her her accent she she she's not the first though you had the whole if you're not voting for me you ain't black you know that 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 side is afforded that because they're the side of saying everybody else is racist so they can't possibly be racist in what they say the other side on the other hand they they say that one just worship <laughs> <laughs> if we just worship our candidate yeah, it, yes. I bet you somewhere in the South there is a Trump church. I wouldn't be surprised. You're, that's a very good point. That's a very good point that on one side, the hardcore is everyone but me is the thing that I am saying the, wor the world uh, needs to change. And on the other side, it's almost a worship thing. It's like, well, if that side's so bad, then God must be behind this guy. And then, you know, the paintings show up of like Jesus holding Trump's shoulders and, you know, angels deflecting bullets. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If there is a, if, if, if there is a God, he is not standing behind Donald Trump guiding his moves. This is a real hard thing for, for people, uh, God fearing people to, to think, but he doesn't get involved on everything because we have to choose how things go. Otherwise, the whole thing about judgment is going to be a real messed up situation. I'll be like, well, well, Kent, you did do this. 
And you had agency. You could have picked another way, but you did this. Yeah, but then that thing happened. Well, okay. Okay, I'll give it to you. I swooped down and I affected that one. So I'm not, you don't get, you're, I'm not judging you on that one because I swooped. He doesn't swoop. He never swoops. If he swoops, it makes it into a book or a scripture somewhere or something, you know. I would vote for the Shane Gillis Trump. Oh, me too. <laughs> if Shane Gillis ran at for president as Trump, I would vote for that guy. If you had to pick a candidate, like one that you're like, you're like, I would live, I would live happily four years under that guy. Like a real person, like somebody not a real person. Yeah. Like somebody who you think would do. Okay. Jordan Peterson. I could, I could get behind that. I think. I think Jordan Peterson is one of the greatest minds of this century. And I love him so much. And I don't fucking care if you're hearing this and cringing. I love Jordan Peterson. Mine's mine's a little odd. Do you know who I'd pick? Who? Dana White. I don't I gotta I can't I can't get behind somebody that will openly not I'm not okay with behind closed doors either, but will in the middle of a crowd slap his wife. Yeah. I don't I, I watched that video and I I and not a lot was made of it. So I Maybe I'm being a bit dismissive. I'm like, what happened? What did happen there? Oh, yeah. Jess just said Jordan Peterson's from Canada. I, I forgot about it. He can't. Yeah. He, he can can't be even... vice president, I think. I forgot about that or something. That's a bummer. That's the only person. Like, I, in my heart, I hope I, if I if I could determine the outcome of, ele of the election, I would give it to RFK. I would, too. I would, too. Um, but I know that's not going to happen. Idiot. Like, there and are... even then, I wouldn't feel, like, great about it. There are because he said some questionable shit too. Yeah. Well, in his youth, I mean, he 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 bumped into a lot of walls. He bumped into a lot of privileged walls, and ideologically, yeah. like he's he and I are opposed on a lot of things. But I think that guy's got an amazing brain, and I think he he truly loves his country. I would I would vote for an RFK. The only reason I said Dana is, and I. I don't know about the wife beating thing. I saw the video, but then it didn't make a lot of head headlines. He's still in he his position. He the fuck out of her. What happened? Do you know They had about? got, it was at a uh, after party. Um, in the video, they're standing on like a, you've seen it. You, they're standing, if yeah, you haven't like seen it, they're balcony. standing on like a balcony. Yeah. And they're up against the, uh, the, the, the fence there. And she says something to him. It's from a distance, yeah. but whatever she said or something, he didn't appreciate it, and he open-handed smacked the fuck out of her. So, and she, she did hit him. First. She hit him. Did she? Yes. That's. I think Is that's that in why the video? If, if the, the yeah, headlines fell apart. And I'm not saying that that's right. I'm not saying. It. I'm putting in the category of. I'm putting it into the category of. Oh, okay. Let's see. Slow mo. See, he fucking rocked her. Now, if her slapping him is in the video, I guess that shows what our mind chooses to remember. Um, I am. Look, I don't think a woman should put her hands on a man either. I want to say that There's... you just because you're smaller than me doesn't mean you have the right to hit me. But that being said, if a a hundred and five pound five foot woman walked up and just hit me in the mouth. Yeah. I would probably be like, I did not appreciate that. You wouldn't, I wouldn't hit her back. Well, you can't, you know, you, and you shan't. Either. I'm not saying that's okay. Unless, just, no, no, I know you're not. <laughs> unless, yeah, okay. I know you're not. Unless it's the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> so what then, about the bear thing? Uh, hey. What's the bear thing? The RFK. He admitted to having Killing left him. a, Killing a bear in Central Park. A baby bear, Killing too. Him. Not even like a... Why did he kill a bear? I don't know. He's doing damage control. He had Roseanne Barr in his house, and they did this, like, video and stuff. Here's the thing. None of them you are good. You bring Roseanne Barr in to do damage control? Because she's a heavy hitter right now politically, believe it or not. She's very no-nonsense. Um, I... Oh, Creasy's saying that he hit it with a car. That's different. Oh, okay. I don't know things. And at least he ran into a bear and not another man. He, you want to know You want to know how I think you fix the country? You pick somebody that shows that they can do the job. 
I don't, I personally do not care. This is going to sound hard. I don't care if you showered with your 14-year-old daughter, Joe Biden. I don't care if you slept your way to the top Kamala Harris. I don't Ah. care if you grabbed him by the pussy, Trump. I don't care because all of those are- I care about all those things. Here's the thing. That has nothing to do with the way they operate the country. None of it has any, and I'm, that's across the board. The way I vote is how have you proven that your job in managing things that are like managing a country, whether you're a senator or a governor or a politician, what are you? What have you proven that you can do to fix my grocery bill? And that I, that's the big problem right now. Like I don't. We went school shopping yesterday, um, which is a whole story in itself. I was sleeping good. Wife like hit me on the shoulder at like eight thirty, and she's like, "Hey, it's two hundred and seventy degrees outside. You want to go uh, do some shopping in an outdoor mall?" So okay, and the back really quick. I I made a statement, and people are already piling on. You got to be a good person. They're saying, "No, you don't." Let me make that clear. Nobody in politics is a good person. No president we've I can had agree with that. is a good I can person. Agree with that. If that's why yeah. how you're voting, you're not going to yeah. vote for the right person because the the media and the way you're seeing that person portrayed. If you think they're a good person then you're being sold a bill of goods. None of them are a good person. Everything I just listed is true. I mean, true. even take into account like the people that are most that are most fondly remembered, polit- JFK, right? Probably the most one of the most loved politicians, yeah. and I see why that's ever existed. Garbage human being. Garbage. In real life, a trash can human being. I with with very few exception, are you going to find a massive mag leader with massive magnitude that wasn't that didn't have major MLK major flaws? I don't care. Huge flaws. Malcolm X. Pick them. It doesn't matter where you go. They're not. You cannot vote based on them being a good or bad person because. If you think that you've figured out that the one you're picking is the one that is a good person, you're reading the wrong media. You really you. That's because by nature, the people that want to do those jobs are shit people. They have different motivations. Like you right? can't want to do that and not be a shit person. Yeah, and th- you know, you know how you know if you're onto a good person is when everybody else piles on them. Like that's a good sign that you're onto something. Elon Musk. Got his problems and stuff, but the world hates that man. You know, like presidents, presidents have whole electronic vehicle conferences and don't invite Tesla. I think I'm, I think I'm picking a good guy then if, you know, in that case, like there are ways to read it, but I'm not picking a president based on his moral compass. Just like I don't pick where I would be employed based on the CEO's moral compass. It's a stupid way to operate. You'd, you'd, you'd have to go and live in the forest by yourself off those ideals. You can't do it. You can't do it. I think presidential candidates should be picked. They shouldn't be. And I know they're picked, but like I don't mean picked as in. <coughs> I think they should be picked by the people and then approached for the oh, job. I see. Approached and be like, hey, we want you I know you're not interested in this, but we need you. If you could run for president, and th- imagine if we got the first person that was a genuine good person and as president yeah. that genuinely had the interest of other people in mind. It would Because be- that's never happened in history, except for maybe like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln before politics got what they are now. That would be a really. I would say even then. Would you think? You think it was greasy even then? Oh yeah. Oh, I can prove really? it. Really? If you go read the book 1776 by by David McCullough, it talks about presidential candidates, the ones that were vying to be president, buying their own printing presses to produce their own media that was slandering the opposition and the reason they so were doing it. So this has been it, going on since oh, its inception. Yeah, because our laws stated very early that there were strict restrictions around what you could say and how you could say it about competitor, your competitor. And so they back then they were buying their own printing presses, having anonymous people slander their com- competitors. It's been happening since Rome. It's been happening since since days of old. And, and and see Stephanie B in the background. She said, "I'm friends with my mayor. He's a great guy. Something happens when they go to upper office. That's the thing. I think that 
if you are a genuinely good person, you never make it out of your hometown. You can't. Or or I think you have to be a slime ball to reach those upper echelons of uh, of politics. If you're a genuinely good person and you're in Congress or Senate, guaranteed we don't know your name. Or if we know your name, it's because you're trying to become something bigger and the opposition is like, nope, not going to happen. Or your, or even your own party. Because you have to be able to be a certain level of puppet to do this job. And I think, I think if maybe that's a reason why Trump is as hated is because he picked other people to help puppet him rather than the normal politician puppets. He was probably more a puppet of business and commerce. Still a puppet. He also says shit that I'm like, what do you think? What do you, whenever he said black jobs. Right. How do you. Okay. How do you even like. Rewind four years In what world do you think that's like. But rewind. For, it was, and people could say, "Well, that was an accident. He didn't mean to say it." That's like that. Like the media. Even if I was stoned out of my mind and up there giving a speech, that term would be like, "That is a bad thing to say." Four years I ago, should not though, say that. The, four years ago, CNN, everything was about black jobs. So the media makes the things the problem. So literally, like people have already supercut that one on X. You can go to Twitter and you can find him saying black jobs and then the media being like, how dare he say that? And then rewind to the same people that are saying, how dare he say that? They're saying black jobs four years ago. So you can't, that's what I'm saying is you can't go off of grab him by the pussy because even that has a backstory. Do you know he's not saying I can go and do that? He's saying there are women that will let you do that. If you go back and listen to that. So everything has a spin. Everything. And I don't care. Uh, did he did he shower with his 14-year-old daughter? Did Biden shower with his 14-year-old daughter? He did not. Exactly. Exactly. He did say she looked awful good, though. I'm just saying, you got to go off of the job description, not off the character. You can, you'll never pick the right guy if you go off character. You won't. And then I'll also cringe. When politics are politicians, and both of them do this a lot, they prop up a black person. Like, look at like Trump just did it at his last at, at his last rally, I believe. He brought a waitress that he ran into at fucking oh, Denny's yeah. or something. She was a black lady, right. very articulate, well spoken lady. But it's just like I see what you're doing, man. Like yeah. this is so. How do we not like? Uh, and the Democrats love doing that. That's like their favorite thing in the world to do is bring up minorities. But Trump did it. Ugh! it just makes me shudder. Like, because like, it's so obvious what you're doing. Democrats will bring up minorities. The Republicans bring up wives of dead veterans. And it makes me want to vomit. Yes. It yeah. makes me want to vomit. That again, Everything always goes back to the veterans. You're such a sh you're a total sheep if if there's something that <laughs> that one of these people has done suddenly and you're like, "Oh, that changes it. I'm voting for them." No, you should be looking at what have they done for the last decade in regards to a job description that remotely resembles the being a president. Are they presidential? Because if we're going off a of character, every single one of them's presidential because they're all pieces of garbage. Yeah. Anyway. Fuck, man. How long do you think we got until until the Civil War kicks off? I and I'm I, I whenever I started asking that question in my head, I thought it was a joke, but by the time I finished the question, I realized, oh, we might actually we might actually be on the brink of an actual civil war. I think we're I think we're already in some ways in a civil I think the thing that's protecting us mentally from knowing we're in a civil war is that we have actually had a couple hundred years to establish our state's laws and guidelines, but ideologically we're very, very polarized. Like if you were re if we were as polarized as we are now, it it's very much 1782. Uh, you know, you 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 have you have very pro-British and you have very pro-American, and they're not going to change their sides. I think we're very, very close to that. I think that we're, we are probably, if you're going off the actual civil war, the U.S. civil war, we're year two or three before the civil war kicks off. Because the only thing that's keeping us from doing what UK is doing right now, where the people get in the streets and they're like, no, we're sick of this. 
The only thing that's keeping us from doing that is we're waiting to see who the president is. And then, and then it starts a roll. One side is going to go, nope, you picked the wrong guy. Police state be damned. We're, we're done. We're, we're done with this. And I honestly, it doesn't matter which one you pick this time. I think it's coming. Well, to lighten the mood a little bit, I would like to share two <laughs> ideas I had for a prank show. Yay. So the first one is you got to. All right. You go into Walmart, right? Yeah. And you have a folder of a, a manila folder and you approach random dudes at Walmart with a camera and you shove a camera in their face and you're like, who are you here to meet? And they're like. Well, what are you talking about? I was like, well, I've got the chat logs oh. right here. Oh, no. You're fake pedos? <laughs> that would be a... Yeah. <laughs> Approaching people as if they're pedophiles and exposing them. <laughs> Even though there's just a guy there trying to get, like, Dawn dish soap because his wife made him go. And now he's in the middle of a scan. He thinks he's about to be shown on a YouTube channel with 5 million subscribers that he's a pedophile. Oh. <laughs> That's what would be even worse is if you do the prank show and you catch people that, that do, that are doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh that would be a real flip. If you, all right, that's our next victim who you here to meet. And he's like, I, I wasn't supposed to tell. I'm sorry. I just, it was a moment of <laughs> she, weakness. She I'm said a- she was 18. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Oh. Um, and then my second idea for a prank show, that's the, the other idea is go on to a college campus and you have a, a black guy. We'd have to get Luther <laughs> and he approaches women that have like purple hair and a bunch of piercings and in the middle of a crowded area and you'd have to have a hidden camera. He just goes, did you just call me the N word? <laughs> <laughs> And then he just keeps accusing her of calling him the N-word. Like, try to find the most social justice warrior person and then accuse them of calling him the N-word in front of a bunch of people. I think that would also be very fun. Okay, let me ask you this. How quickly? I've, 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 I often run this scenario in my head. The one that I always run in my head is, how, how far into a mall could I get if all I did was start from the front door sprinting and just punching women and children? How far could I get before I'm tackled? That would be a good question oh. for the N-word one is if you, at, if, you, if you had Luther go up to another guy and be like, did you just – how long would it take before the crowd around them beat the daylights out of that random <laughs> – man. Well, that's when you drop the ju- – the, the, It's a prank. It's a prank. It's a prank. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh. but we've got to get Luther out of there fast. Yeah, you got to get him out because it's a prank. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, again, that would even be a fun social experiment. It's a prank. This guy almost got the daylights beat out of him. But I'm going to say that the crowd goes, that's fine. It was just a prank. No problem, black man. Nope, no problem. Yeah, we understand what you're doing. Go on with your day. <laughs> no one's going to beat Luther up. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't want to mess up that face. He's beautiful. No one's going to mess with him. Oh, man. I'm just coming up with a lot of, I'm watching a, a whole lot of, I've gotten into this guy named Infrabrin. And I don't know if you've watched Infrabrin. Infrabrand? Infrabrin. It's I-N-F-R-A-B-R-E-N. Brin. And his videos are so fucking funny because he has this just super awkward character and he does it in Walmart. He does it in a lot of places where he just walks up and acts like he knows people. And he's like, hey, it's Bryn. It's Bryn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he just won't let him off the hook. <laughs> and he says awkward shit like, oh, man, are those toes still shiny? I used to suck on those things. <laughs> and they get so... <laughs> I cannot promote Infra Bryn enough. He's like the... I-N-F-R-A... B R E N. What's the guy that you told us about the other day where it's the black dude and he walks up to him and he's just like, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it right now. It's the guy. Yeah, he walks up and he, say he's like in the alcohol aisle and there's someone looking at, to buy alcohol and he'd be like, been sober for eight years now. 
Are you itching real bad? I got an AA program you can go to. You know, he's, he's got, <laughs> or he'll walk up like the chip aisle. He'd be like, "Yeah, I've been off that high for fructose corn syrup for about six months. How's it going for you?" Oh. <laughs> like, and people are like, "I'm not an alcoholic." Yeah. and he's like, "Yeah, that's the first that's step. What I say. First Acceptance. step. That's what I said. That's the first step is admitting your problem." Yeah, <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah, Fine, is it? Well, if a brand will come up, his, his his like go-to greeting to somebody. And if you and the funny thing is, is seeing like if you get a the funniest part is seeing what they're seeing because he dresses so ridiculous. He just looks like an inbred redneck and he'll approach somebody and his opening line is always, well, how the hell are you, buddy? <laughs> oh, just to a complete stranger. <laughs> and, or he also has videos. You've probably seen these where he'll go into a restaurant. And he'll greet the, the the staff first, and it's usually something along the lines of like, uh, what is one of them? He does a rhyme that's usually really grotesque. So he did this like diarrhea rhyme to the late, this just innocent woman that's just doing her job at uh, Applebee's. He walks up, he's like, well, what is it? Uh, down my... Well, well, spank my ass and call me Lou. Down my leg runs, runs a stinky poo. <laughs> and she's just staring at him, and he goes, <laughs> a little diarrhea joke for you. Table for one, please. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, have, have you Have you seen um, John Breaks Bad News? Have you seen this guy? Yeah, where he people pay him to tell to break up with people yeah. and and yeah, those are funny too. A little diarrhea joke for you, table for one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll get to the table and make the entire exchange with the waitress for the entire meal. So uncomfortable and awkward. Like he told one of them, he leaned in and he's like, "Hey, my buddy." My buddy Clem just gave us unsupervised access to four cadavers in the morgue tonight at 10 o'clock. <laughs> you uh, interested? You want in? And they're all <laughs> unsupervised access to four cadavers in the morgue. Uh, we're going to meet up there tonight at 10. You in? What? Again, wh what, what if he, what if he, oh, wait, I think I've seen one of, of his. Oh, uh, no, I, I don't know. But wouldn't that be funny if he he actually did the prank and got people that were you know interested in the stuff and they're like yeah so I'll meet you oh it happens I want to say he had one where he 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 hired I don't know if it's his girlfriend or his wife but she looks really young and he put her in like footy pajamas and had her get in the shopping cart and he was going around and being like hey how the hell are you buddy I'm looking for a babysitter. <laughs> And she's like acting all seductive, like a, and she looks like 14. <laughs> and he found a guy and it got really weird and creepy. He started like rubbing his crotch and he's like, yeah, I can babysit her. I can babysit her. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. You got to watch it with the prank. Uh, my favorite prank TV, my pr favorite prank videos are the ones where the, the person that's doing the prank does not understand that the prank is already by nature way too far. And then they get a total beat down. I, I love those. Yeah. Yeah. You know what country's wild for pranks though is Brazil. Like Poland. Po oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil. Brazil's the they're the ones that like they'll do the the elevator where the lights go out and then the ring girl shows up in the back of the elevator. She climbs out of like a metal panel. Oh, the lights yeah. come back on and then the lights go out and she disappears. Like they're on another level down there. I'll tell you who's on another level. You were right about one country. It wasn't Brazil. The Japanese yes. are the absolute best at prank shows. Scary as heck. At pranking people. Because I don't know that they have any laws over there where it's too far. <laughs> I don't think so. They had one where there were people in a public toilet. People would go in, drop their pants, and be in the middle of using the bathroom, and it was a fake floor oh. that would just drop them out and, and, and have them shoot into a river with their pants down. <laughs> 
Now, this is Japan, so they're the same people that brought us MXC, which was probably one of the most dangerous shows ever made. What was the other name of MXC? You know, it's the one with like the, you know, the, where they have to run the gauntlet and the bat hits him in the face and knocks him into the water. Yeah. Takashi's, Takashi's castle. castle. Yes, that's right. Chase, even when he's silent, he's got the answers. I'm telling you, man, the Japanese are a lot years ahead on all fronts. Except for baby making. <laughs> Except for baby making. They're, they're in trouble there. Uh, what did you bring today? Today I wanted to talk about a painting op. Wow. A painting called The Bragolin Crying Boy. And if that doesn't sound ominous and creepy enough, it's about to get way worse. Because... Uh, first off, I'll pull up a picture of the painting. So here's the painting we're going to be talking about today. Ooh. The okay. Bragolin Crying Boy. Okay. I'll let everybody get a good look at it, and then I'll turn it off. S sort of uh, n nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Just looks like a portrait of a somber boy. Like, not, are yeah, there even... nothing crazy. Are there tears on his face at all? No? Just yeah, he's of... got tears. It's just a little boy. He's crying. We don't okay. know why he's crying. Yeah, he's just sad, but not like Creasy overly said he's sad. very cute. He is a very <clears throat> cute little boy. But, and this might just me knowing the backstory behind this painting. There's something about it that's a little creepy. Okay. And like I said, that might just be, be the knowing the backstory. The painting itself... Not a very interesting backstory to the painting itself, just its creation, or the, even the guy that... It's painted by a guy named Giovanni Bragolin. Okay. Um, painted in the, uh, in the late 1940s, early 1950s. But here's the thing. It was mass-produced. It was a mass-produced print. And in the uh, 1950s, it was sold all over. All over. Very mass-produced painting. <coughs> and like, ah, like I said, very widely distributed in the 1950s. But a lot of people believe that this painting is cursed. And there's quite a bit of, of evidence to possibly back this up. On September 5th, 1985, an SX firefighter claimed that their fire department had came across multiple copies of this painting in burned buildings, and they were completely undamaged. Wait, so that on multiple occasions. So the Essex Fire Department coming, is coming across burned buildings, and they're finding this painting in each one of the buildings untouched. Yes. Whoa. Untouched. Unburned. And this happened a lot. And this isn't like a, a rumor. This is ha This happened. Wow. So naturally, you're going to go, this is creepy. We keep coming across burned houses, burned buildings uh, with these paintings inside that are completely un untouched. Un they don't have burn marks on them. And it's not like we don't know how the paintings got in the house. The owners admitted, yeah, I bought that painting and it was hanging in there, but I don't know why it's not burning. By the end of that note, so this came out on September 5th, 1985. By that November, the belief in the painting's curse was widespread enough that the newspaper, The Sun, started organizing mass bonfires of, this paint, of these paintings. Ironic. <laughs> Since it, it is. wasn't burnable. <laughs> and those bonfires, it took a lot to get them to burn. Really? Oh, weird. Oh, that's creepy. In early September 1985, Yorkshire fireman Peter Hall was qu quoted in a national newspaper as saying that fire brigades across north of England had found multiple examples of the same picture remaining untouched in fires and that the causes remained unknown. Hall spoke out after his brother, Ron Hall, who did not believe the story, deliberately bought a copy of The Crying Boy to disprove the jinx. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Ugh. But here's a few examples 
of of this phenomenon with this painting. Dora Brand of Mitcham, Surrey, saw her entire home reduced to nothing but a pile of smoldering ashes. And six weeks, uh, and that was just six weeks after she bought the painting. And although she had multiple paintings in the house, the crying boy was the only painting in that entire thing that survived. What? Sandra Krask of Kilburn said that she, her sister, and her mother, and a friend all had suffered fires since buying copies of the picture. So not only is there a a a a a suspected curse that these paintings will survive fires, but that maybe they cause fires. Oh, that's an interesting angle. Oh. On October 21st, 1985, the Perillo Pizza Palace at Great Yarmouth, Norfolk, was destroyed by a fire, and that Norfolk Pizza Palace had prominently displayed the Crying Boy picture in its restaurant. Of course, the Crying Boy picture, after the pizza place burned to the ground, remained completely unharmed. What? On October 24th. 1985, the Godper family of Herringthorpe, York, South Yorkshire, lost their home to an unexplained fire. And as you guessed it, the crying boy picture in their living room, completely unscathed by the flames. Whoa. And this goes on and on. October 25th, 1985, November 1985, fire after fire, crying boy survives. And they, these fires usually happen after shortly after they bought the painting. Um, November 1985, a woman from Leeds destroyed her picture of the crying boy because it had caused a fire in her house, she thinks, and in that fire, regardless of how it was caused, her husband and her three sons all died. Holy the only thing crap. left in the house, aside from the corpses of her family, was the crying boy. Completely unscathed. What? And there's there's evidence there's there there's case after case after case after case. We could do this forever with these pictures of this crime boy. But now, why is this happening? Why is this happening? If you've got an answer, then I I am very interested. I, I can I can I can answer fifty percent of your question. Okay. Steve Punt, who was a British writer and comedian, decided he wanted to investigate this curse. And I can tell you why the painting doesn't burn. I can't tell you why these fires are happening when people, maybe it's coincidence. But Steve Punt found out why the painting isn't burning. The conclusion reached by Steve Punt, they took the painting, did a bunch of testing, at a building research establishment and determined that all of these prints were actually treated with a varnish that had a fire retardant in it. Oh. That's not the only reason it's not burning. Furthermore, the string that came with the painting that held it to the wall burned very easily. So the string burns easily. The string burns extremely easily. So what happens is you've already got this fire retardant that the front of this painting is coated in. The string burns, the painting falls, and because it falls at the base of a wall, it falls face down. Oh. Essentially protecting it from the, because you know, if it's flat against the floor, yeah, yeah. a lot of times in fires, say a book for for example, falls on the floor. If you'll notice in a fire, when you go to clean it up, the, the front cover of the book is oftentimes unburned, unfazed by the flame. Well, it's it's why actors don't get burned when they use the fake, when they use the fire gel and stuff, because a lot of people don't know, but if you look at a flame, the bottom of a flame is actually very cool compared to the top of the flame. So anything down on the ground where it, underneath the flame would be the coldest point if you got to be in a fire. Rather than yes. being roasted above it. Yeah. Wow. So, and I could I could read the uh, the the case after case after case 
of people's houses catching on fire after they bought the painting? I can't answer that, but we can answer why it's coming out relatively unscathed in all of these fires. And I just thought that was really interesting. That is wild. The Bragolin Crying Boy painting that just had the, the UK in a stranglehold in the 80s. It's it's weird, too, to me, just the, the, the fact that it's sort of a boring painting. So why was it so popular? Like, why did so many people want to buy it? It was interesting. Well, I mean, the 80s were a boring time. It's like everything was brown and, and orange. Yeah. We tried to carpet everything. Wallpaper. Um, the <clears throat> 80s, in my opinion, I know this is going to, like, really rub a lot of people that were born in the 70s the wrong way. Because um, I get offended if people talk shit about the 90s. Mm. But the 80s, worst years for cars. Yeah. Um, I think worst years for, for music. Um, Not the worst years for movies. A lot of fucking amazing movies came out in the 80s. Yeah, that's true. But definitely worst years for home interior decoration. I'd say. Um, Worst years to be gay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, with the exception... I will give you uh, the exception that I would make as far as cars go. The 88, 89 Ford Mustang 50. That was a, that was a real, it was kind of the, the squarer, the boxier shape, but that thing pin your ears yeah. back. It was a good, it was a good that, but other than that, I'd agree with you with the cars. Uh, you know, I also want to take out that the eighties were the worst years to be gay. I think that's not fair. I would argue that it was objectively worse to be gay in like 1740. Yeah. Yeah. What? But the most modern decade, the worst years to be gay. But yeah, the 5 is a staple in the car. Like those things, even in bad condition, you're going to spend over 10K yep. for one of them. But that's really the only car I think that comes out of the 80s popular. I'd agree. Yeah. Name one few. other vehicle that came out of the 80s. That is still sought after today outside of, I'll give you the Grand National. Maybe, maybe some of the Plymouths because they're the hoopty cars now, the ones that, like the bouncing, you know, maybe some of those. Like the, uh, oh, you mean like, uh, okay. Like the Plymouths are the, okay. The yeah, Cadillac. like the boxy kind of family vehicles yeah. that they put the hydraulics and shit what on. What year was the one that they used in, in, the superstition movie. Um, why can't I think of the name of the movie? The, the black car. That it's the two brothers. They go around hunting. Ghosts. I've never seen the Blues Brothers. No, 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 no. It's the TV show. You love the car. You love the car. Talk about supernatural. Supernatural. What year was that? That was us. I think it's a sixty-seven. Oh, okay. Well, well before. Okay. All right. Never mind. Um. So your painting reminded me. Of a painting that I wanted to mention. Can I can I share my screen? Absolutely. Really okay. Um, all right. So I have a tab here. This painting has similar haunting backstories. It's called the painting's name is The Hands Resist Him. And you'll I notice I don't like fuck, I don't fucking like this. I don't care for it at all. It's very creepy. Now, I'll post a Turn link. Turn you that off. I don't want to see it. <laughs> it the again, cold, dead eyes. What the fuck the boy. is that? Check out the girl. The girl isn't a real girl. It's a doll. No, fuck that. Look at the hands pressed against the door in the background that uh, are just the coming window. out of the goddamn darkness. I know. It gives me chills every time I see it. There's a Wikipedia all about this painting. You just Google the hands resist him and you'll fall. Oh, and the, the girl is holding a battery. Why? I don't know. But the black eyes, the thing is, at first glance, Ugh. it's just innocuous. It's not that big a deal. It's like the crying boy. But the more you look at it, the more it, and, and so the backstory behind this painting, I'll, I'll let you guys dig into it on your own, but the hands resist him is another painting of children that just like shouldn't exist. It just shouldn't exist in my opinion. Oh God. That looks it's like not. the dude, that dude looks like the doorman for hell. That's what it looked like. 
<laughs> the gatekeeper to hell. Ugh. It's just the little boy from fucking Sling Blade standing next to a giant shark eyed doll. It's so weird. It's creepy. But it got me thinking when you when you mentioned your that was really cool. Because I, I, I up till now, like I've got this thing about creepy paintings. There there's a bunch of uh, Peter Bruegel Senior and Junior. They make these crazy paintings. You might have seen them. Like it's it's like a depiction of hell. Like the Bruegel, they're fourteen hundreds when they made them, but like it's demons eating people, and like there's Dante's Inferno painting, and like oh, the, just the way they paint is so creepy and eerie. But Bruegel paintings and the hands that was well, I'm I'm really into like. Knowing what Creasy's asking where these paintings are now. Mm. The uh the the little boy painting that I was talking about, that was mass produced. So they're everywhere still. Um I don't know if they're still causing fires, but that that painting was mass produced. So there wasn't just one painting. I'm assuming op that the one you just showed, that's probably a singular painting, right? Yes. So there's just one there of them. There may be prints of it, but according to uh Google, as of April 2024, the hands resist him by st- I just even the pin the name uh painted by Bill Stoneham was listed for auction on eBay by an elderly Californian couple who found it in an abandoned brewery. Gall. So even the hands resist him is also what I called myself when I was 13 years old at church <laughs> trying to find God. Uh, uh, you know what I liked about that conversation that we had about that is like, I don't feel like I got my point across and I, 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 but I feel like you still, you're still okay. You're still my friend. You know what I mean? I love you. I appreciate you that. You can believe whatever the fuck you want. I still love you. I appreciate that. The same that. goes for liberals and conservatives and gay people and straight people and black. As long as you don't hate on me for what I think, I respect your beliefs. I like that about us. <laughs> okay, guess what I brought today? Birds. But birds, but dinosaurs. And saying those two words kind of kills the question I was going to ask right off the front, but... What animal alive today is actually a descendant of dinosaurs? The answer, birds, right? Specifically, I might be wrong, but I think the ostrich. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think that's the, the closest ostriches. living relative to dinosaurs, isn't it? The ostrich? I would, I, I don't know, but I would not doubt it. That thing looks like a dinosaur. It literally does. Check this out. So 2024 has been a massive year for dinosaur discoveries. And so I I thought I'd bring a couple. So the first one here, there's an early bird, early bird, not like the, the quote, but this one was one of the earliest birds lived 120 million years ago in China. It's called the Imparavis, the Imparavis. It was during the early Cretaceous period. Let me fucking look up this goddamn bird. Imparavis. I-M-P-A-R-A-V-I-S. Looks like a bird. So this feathered... Oh, it's just a fuck... It's just a bird. Yeah. Yeah. It's a feathered dinosaur. And it's part of a fascinating group known as Enantiornithes. Enantiornithes, or get this, opposite birds, which were quite different, actually, from the birds that we see today. What sets um, the Amparavis and the other Enantionorth, Enantian, Enantiornithes apart from random birds is the unique structure of their shoulders. So in modern birds, you have the scapula, like the shoulder blade, right? It articulates in a certain met in a certain manner. Um, however, with our imparavis, the articulation is actually the opposite. So this, this feature in and of itself is what gives them the name, the opposite bird. So this, this bird, the discovery of this bird is crucial actually, uh, for several reasons. First, 
it helps bridge a gap. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. Like they'll find a dinosaur bone and they'll be like this bone right here. And they'll, they'll explain it as this, this bridges the gap in our knowledge between, we don't know what happens in this branch of development with a, with a dinosaur, you know, but they'll find a bone and they'll be like this answer. This is a piece to the puzzle in answering a question we've had for a long time. So this bird, the Imperavis actually helps bridge gaps in our understanding of bird evolution. So unlike a lot of its contemporary birds, like today's birds, Imparavis did not have teeth. This is a significant evolutionary step because it suggests that the loss of teeth and the development of an actual beak in, the, in this breed of birds occurred much earlier than we actually thought. We thought that they lost their teeth a lot, a lot later. But this is showing that 120 million years ago, they were already starting to lose their teeth. They were gaining beaks. Um, it was once believed that opposite birds lost their teeth around 72 million years ago, but now we're down, pushed it back by almost a 50 million years from there. So we're out at 120 million. So the beak is another point of interest. So beaks are incredibly versatile tools, as we know, with like birds today. They allowed birds to exploit a wide range of ecological niches. Uh, the development of a beak in Imparavis indicates an adaptation to a specific diet or feeding strategy, which would have been crucial for its survival. So dinosaurs are tromping around looking for moving animals, dead things. The beak introduced a new method for catching insects out of the air or boring into holes in trees or, or the ground to find food, which was a whole different angle than other, than other dinosaurs at the time. So it, it leveraged a whole different ecosystem to survive. And they think that that's actually one of the reasons why Imparavis and birds in general evolved successfully and dinosaurs died out is because they found a diverse food source where dinosaurs were looking on the surface all the time in cold weather, everything goes underground, you know? So the birds could survive in different seasonal temperature, seasonal climates, as opposed to dinosaurs, which are like, if it's not on the top of the earth, then they're screwed. So this was kind of, this was kind of cool. <clears throat> um, you know what I love about you? What? I know that you're very religious. Um, I go back to this, a callback, but Despite how religious you are, you're still willing to acknowledge that evolution is a thing. Oh, man. And I, I respect that about you very much. I don't think they're dis because like, I, I don't know if I'm like different in the world of people that are religious, but I don't see that they're different. I think God's a scientist and everything that he does is based on science. I don't think he does magic. The only thing that's magic to, to us is stuff we don't understand, I think. So I think evolution is a whole, that's actually a part of the creation process. Like I'm not of a belief that God just goes, bloop, there you go. There you go. I'm going to give you, you know, dinosaur bloop. I think everything evolved. And I think that's actually part of the process. Look at us. Like if I've, if, if I believe in God, I got to believe that he believes that I should be able to evolve over time, over my lifetime. Right. Why wouldn't he yeah. use the same process Absolutely. for animals? So. And also it just makes sense. Yeah. Evolution is something that makes perfect sense to me. Me too. I love the fact that it's a map, right? Like it can prove itself because we find evidence of, of it all along the way. And the exciting parts are like with Imparavis, for example, they're like, there's their missing piece. Where's the missing piece? And then Imparavis shows up and they're like, oh, we found it. We found it. I love that, that it's a map. And I, I don't know. I, I think, I think we, if if you believe in if you believe in God, I think one of the things that we often get wrong is we think God's impatient. <laughs> I think evolution in and of itself shows that if he if there was a creator, he's got a lot of patience. It's just me. It's just me. But thanks. I, I have you that. seen where they scientists believe that apes um, have just reached the Stone Age? Oh, really? Uh, yes. Use it tool making. They've started using tools. They've got video of them uh, fishing from branches. Really? 
hanging from branch. Yeah, yeah, they think that uh, apes in 2024, our version, modern apes, have just entered their version of the Stone Age. Yeah, that's amazing. I love looking at, like, a lot of people don't know this, but if you look at the branch of humanoid, so like where we come from, evolutionarily, there are nine or more branches of humanoid. And what's crazy about it is you've got us in this advanced state and we made it till now. But if you look at the others that didn't make it, it's sort of like the the one way on the far end of didn't make it is sort of like the cheap China dollar general version of human. Like it was never going to survive a day, you know, just like the toy you buy for your kid from Dollar General. It wasn't going to yeah. survive very long because it had a bunch of mistakes. It was physically flawed. But it's wild to see like how evolution actually builds a more resilient. To your point with the monkey, it's like watch that play out over another million years. We may be sitting next to, you know, an animal that that is very close to thinking and and communicating like we do. I, I love that stuff. I always get so frustrated. Not f- I just check out when somebody says they don't believe in evolution. Like, just check out. I don't like. I'm just not not interested in the conversation. I don't know what you know what I mean. What's the like, other side of that? Like, well, like, what do you believe in if you don't believe that evolution was a thing? We have proof of evolution. Yeah. Like the over, even if you disregard the overwhelming amount of scientific proof that evolution is a thing, we have proof of certain uh, breeds of frog that have been relocated to uh, streams in California that in just a few generations completely changed their color to match the surrounding vegetation and area. Really? In just a few generations? In just a few generations. Yeah. Yeah, I I get... And that's observable, (laughs) like, in our lifetime. That's just in a matter of years. And that's You know, like, imagine what a million years could do. Yeah, I mean, I, I oh, I, I think, okay, so I, I think I answered my own question. So the other side of not believing in evolution would be believing that, is it, is, is it, I mean, you come from kind of the Bible belt, so maybe you know this better than I do. Is the, is the perception that, yeah, we have evolution with all the animals, but humans are special, so God just plopped us on the earth? Is that kind of the... Like, I've never really looked into it very much. No, they don't believe... A lot of the, like, hardcore, hardcore, like... Creationists. Deep, deep, deep state Bible Belt <laughs> people. Like, the kind of people that... I, and they're good. They're fun people to hang out with. Yeah. And they always make the best casseroles <laughs> on the face of the earth. I want to throw that out there. <laughs> You'll never have a better hash brown casserole. You'll never have a better cornbread pudding. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever enjoyed a good cornbread pudding. I don't know if that's a Southern thing. It's definitely Southern, but I've had it in Alabama. So those people that just, they don't think that just animals evolved. They downright say evolution is not a thing. That's amazing. Like, how do they argue away all the evidence? They don't. Oh. They plug their ears and go, la, 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 la. Oh. La 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 la. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. My mom Which is their has prerogative. A... You know, if they want to believe that, that's cool. It has no effect on me whatsoever. But the momperator is I don't know immovable on something that I I I, I have a hard time. She thinks that the earth, the dinosaurs on the earth were actually never alive on the earth. She she's <laughs> she believes that the dinosaurs that are here are evidence of like meteors hitting the earth. And there was stuff inside the meteor with the dinosaur bones and stuff. And I'm like, mom, do you know that is fascinating? You know, cataclysmic at that impact is nothing survives that outside of an (laughs) element. Yeah. I'm like, you can't plus they're, they're intact. How do you, she's like, that's just what I believe. And I'm like, that's, I will say this up. I wish your mother was right because that's a fucking awesome theory 
I hate that it holds no scientific weight whatsoever. I wish I could believe that. I like to, in my head, think that on some distant planet in another galaxy, <laughs> there are T-Rexes roaming the planet. And how they got on the meteor, I really don't know. <laughs> I but, know. Like, I can't wrap my head around. I'm like, Mom, how did it become a meteor? Was it like an interstellar melon baller that just is scooping <laughs> circles out of other planets and just hucking them into space? Like, how does that happen, Mom? She's like, I don't know. It's just what I believe. And I'm like, okay, all right. God, I wish she was right. That is so much more exciting <laughs> than the truth. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm going to try to make myself believe that. It's just so crazy. Really hard. But you know what's funny is she's not too far off on how life may have been seated on Earth, where impacts from other other interstellar objects introduced Bio, biological. biological material to the earth. It would have had yeah. to have happened that way because the earth started Absolutely. as a giant lava ball. You can't, nothing Absolutely. survives that. So it is interesting to think, you know, even, even with, with regard to that, like evolutionarily how the earth actually got life anyway. It's, I love this. I love that kind of stuff. Okay. I just wanted to list off a couple other discoveries that were made in 2024. Okay. We actually have a new Tyrannosaurus species. Did you know this in 2024? I did not. Yeah, they found it in Mexico. It's Tyrannosaurus macranus. That sound a little, little, little racy there. This fierce predator roamed the Earth 62 million years ago, about four million years before the famous T Rex. So it had some cool differences too. T macranus had smaller horns and a more slender skull compared to T-Rex, but don't let that fool you. It was just as deadly. It hunted massive prey like giant horned dinosaurs and titanosaurs. Now, here's something. This is really cool. So some scientists a little while ago said, have we, have we found the biggest tyrannosaur? And so they used a lot of data and they put all this data together and they said that based on the data and the findings that we've found so far, they believe that the largest tyrannosaur, uh, um, realistically speaking, because you know they they do that all the time. Like we found Big Blue, the giant, the, that giant great white that's still out there in the ocean, you know, and and we've never seen anything as big as it. So they're going for the they're they're saying based on data, the largest tyrannosaur that lived is probably sixty percent bigger than the current tyrannosaur that we have in a museum, which would mean that it's, I can't, I can't wrap my head around how big that is. That's massive. It's like 60 feet long or something like it's, So that's really cool to think about that. Yes, we found a lot of big T-Rexes and stuff, but have we found the biggest one that ever exists? No, probably uh, not. Look at this one. Tyrannosaurus McDonaldus. <laughs> it's got the coloring of Ronald. That's fun. Okay, here's here's a couple more just to just to round out the list. We have Yangbong, Yanbong. It's a four-legged plant-eating dinosaur from China. It lived a hundred million years ago. Now remember, this is significant because these are I don't are just... think I'm looking at the right thing. <laughs> it's spelled oh <laughs> yen bomb. Um which happened yesterday for anyone that follows the stock market. Um, but Yan Bong, Y-A-N-B-O-N-G, Yan Bong. All one word. Hmm. All one word, Yan Bong. Oh. You're going to get a lot of pictures of bongs unless you put the two words together. But this is a plant eater, lived 100 million years ago. It was a type of stegosaur, actually. Are you spelling it right? I can't see. Y A N B O N G. Y A N. Maybe put dinosaur Yan after Bong Yan Bong dinosaur. dinosaur. Um, it, it was a type of stegosaur, uh, last of its kind before they went extinct. It had plates on its back and a spiky tail for defense, similar to its famous cousin, the steg stegosaur. So, what's wild is that stegosaurs lived for 50 million years without much change. Like they didn't evolve a whole lot over 50 million years. Maybe that's because they were already well built, you know? Yeah. They're like a perfect, it's like a, like look at the alligator. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, there doesn't need to be any adjustments made to that thing. Yeah. Um, there's a giant plant eater that they found in Argentina in 2024 so far called the Inu, I-N-U. Lived 86 million years ago. It was a sauropod, so it's sort of in that long neck brachiosaur kind of family. Part of the group of uh, includes brontosaur and brachiosaurus. Had a unique boxy head, different from other sauropods of its time. It resembles sort of an older extinct dinosaur. So this made it low on the uh, helped it much uh, munch on low lying soft vegetation. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else really cool. There, so there was a ton that have been found so far. Um, oh, here's one. There's one more. Eon Neophron, which was discovered in South Dakota this year, lived 66 million years ago alongside T-Rex. It's a theropod, was an oviraptor, known for their feathers, beaks, and sometimes their crests. So this is sort of like that little cackling one from yeah um oh it's a lot bigger than i was picturing yeah it's like yeah it's a foot taller than a human yeah, it's a big it's a big one um for this for that type of dinosaur so its discovery actually challenges the theory that dinosaur diversity was declining before their extinction so a lot of people thought that the diversity the, the diversification of dinosaurs had started on the decline but this is actually proving that there were new oviraptors that were still being cranked out by evolution. And that, def that, that helps us think that there was actually a, quite a thriving ecosystem right up until the dinosaurs disappeared. Um, there are some really cool ones. You know what bums me out? Mm. This new thing they're trying to, and I, I don't want to say push, because... Apparently, there's some evidence to suggest that the T-Rex wasn't the giant um, carnivorous destruction machine that we know and love, but more of a scavenger yeah, and kind of uh, just a, a pussy. Yeah. Um, and that makes me <clears throat> very sad. I have no I, doubt. I, I, I have no doubt that it wouldn't fight if it had to, but what we're learning... Not only, obviously, we've talked about this before, the fact that it probably had feathers, but T-Rex also was a, <coughs> a scavenger. Yeah. He, he, it, it, it doesn't, to me, to me, over evolution, like think of things that are scavengers, they lose their teeth, you know? Yeah. It, it to me, it seems, I, I hold out hope that it was still just kicking butt and taking names. That's what, that's how my T-Rex in my heart. Well, like my T-Rex, the one that I have that came down in a meteor, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a badass. The Momperator Rex. <laughs> yeah. The Momperator Rex. She was a badass. She was a badass. Yeah. She right, was a I'm badass. Gonna leave, I'm going to leave you with one dinosaur. This one's so cool. Uh, it's called Busting Ori Titan. Busting Ori. B-U-S-T-I-N-G. O R Y busting Ori, all one word, or Titan. They found it in Argentina. They find all of these titanosaurs down in Argentina. Holy fuck, dude! Right? I've got to show this one. It's crazy. Lived ninety five million years ago. It's so big. The titanosaur survived. This this one, busting Ori Titan, survived a local extinction event that wiped out other sauropods in the time with its competitors gone then busting or e titan and its kin took over and they ended up dominating the landscape but this thing they just found it and what what's crazy to me and that i love this is these things are so enormous but we are still finding them you know discovering them for the first time like imagine that thing's just hanging out in the earth and we didn't know about it until until 2024. That just blows my mind. Wasn't it things were able to get this big because there was more oxygen in the atmosphere yeah. at the time, correct? Yes, and, the, and uh, that's why insects got bigger too. And there's actually uh, uh, studies that say that in tech, insects particularly have a max they can get size-wise because of the way their circulatory and their 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 breathing systems work. That that def that that helped prove that there was a higher oxygen 
uh, level in the atmosphere. That's why they they got bigger. But oof, man, that thing is huge. So I love. I, I lately I've been kind of on a Argentinian Argentinian titanosaur uh, hunt because it's there's a lot of wild stuff down there. I have a <sighs> a buddy from the, from the Marines. His name Fidoli. Is his name super like I love the guy so much. We're still friends to this day, but just like super Jersey Shore kind of like fucking just shredded a big meathead talk like Polly D, you know, <laughs> like, and he was a devout believer that dinosaurs didn't exist ever. And they were created by the government <laughs> wow. to make money. And it was our favorite thing to do as a squad or a platoon, depending on where we were sleeping that night to make fun of Fidoli while we all drifted off to sleep and hear his wild, his wild opinions on like Fidoli, how did they make money? He's like museums, dude, <laughs> museums. He had the whole thing like, figured Fidoli, out. What are the bones made out of then? He's like, it's just fucking plaster. It's just fucking plaster castings, man. <laughs> Dinosaurs were never fucking real. He sounds like my mom. He's got he's he's got it all worked out. He's got it all worked out. And the out. funny thing about Fidoli is though he wasn't religious at all. He just <laughs> didn't believe in dinosaurs. That's amazing. Oh, it, and it now works, if it you're makes... interested, he does uh, deep sea fishing uh, trips for people down in Florida. Really, <laughs> in the uh, Everglades, I believe he is a charter for a fisherman. He owns a big fishing boat, and he'll take you out in the ocean and catch big marlin and shit. Oh, that's fun! With you, shout out to Tony Fidoli. Oh man, I love it when it's people. The fucking government created it, dog. It's castings. It's for make money. Dinosaurs were never real, Mullins. <laughs> Uh, so we would just lay out underneath that Afghan sky in the dark in our sleeping bags. Some of my best memories are from that. Just fucking with Fidoli. Oh, that's fun. Fuck all y'all. That's what he was. <laughs> and he's not going to change his mind. No. <laughs> oh, man. This has been a great episode for not changing people's mind. We've given you a little sum of everything. Dinosaurs, politics, God, not God. Uh, we probably made people hate me more, like you, like you more. It's been everything, everything you uh, could want. Anyway, I liked this episode. This was fun. Y'all thought I was playing, didn't you? Look. <laughs> I wasn't playing. Oh, wow. Look at that. He really is. He's a legit, like, what do you call them? Fisherman guides? Yeah. Look at that thing. Catches big boys. People pay him to take them out deep sea fishing. He's a fucking great dude, but he does not believe in dinosaurs. You know what, dude? Sometime we should have him on the Never Daily just so he can preach on his... Look at that meathead. Wow. Look at those biceps. Look, at he's he's a beautiful man. He's he's really kept He the... is good looking. Does not believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> wow. His American flag shorts. We should have him on sometime. And and like we won't argue with him. We just want the full download on on we'll ask him questions about you know the bones and the government. Oh, he's got some theories. Oh, too. we should get he him. He is on. a fun That'd dude, so man. Fun. He's he's such a character. Uh, Fuck all y'all. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. They were made I'm by the government. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to work with you. We should get him on. That would be so much fun. Oh, uh, all right. Well, well, we're coming up on 2 gonna, hours. Yeah, yeah. It's another episode of Never Daily Podcast. We're glad you were here. Hopefully, we didn't scare you away. And um soup soup everybody. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. This podcast is gonna blow So soup soup, let's start the show